Hello. In this video, I will show how to do packet captures in Clavis to a CUS core. In the video, I will focus on how to do captures using the web user interface. In another video, I will show how to do it using the command line interface. In the web user interface, you find the packet capture tool under status, tools, and packet capture. At the top, we have capture options, which you can use to fine tune the capture. I will talk more about that in a moment. Next, we have the button to start the capture. And below that, we have the main area, which currently is empty because we have no capture running. And below that, we have two other buttons, the stop all button, which is currently grayed out because we have no capture running and the cleanup button, which we use to clear the capture buffer. When a capture is running, it is uh, stored into a buffer in memory. So let's start the capture and see what happens. As soon as we have started the capture, the main area will be filled with information, one line per interface. There are a number of columns the interface column shows all interfaces. This is including in Ethernet interfaces, VLANs, IPsec tunnels, link aggregation, and so on. In my specific case, I only have four Ethernet interfaces. Time started shows the timestamp when the packture capture was initiated. It's important to have the correct date and time set especially if you want to correlate different capture files, for instance, between different devices. So make sure you have that correct time. Mode shows if a capture is active or idle. Packet count shows the number of captured packets so far. And in this case, we can see that the management interface is increasing as well as the LAN interface, while the WAN and DMZ interfaces are zero. So there's only traffic on the management and the LAN interface. The action column has action buttons. And these buttons up here uh, are used if you want to stop the capture on a specific interface. As I said before, the stop all button, it will stop all interface captures. So let's try that. Now see what happens. The mode has changed from active to idle on all interfaces and the packet count has stopped increasing and here in the action column we now have download buttons except only those interfaces where there have been some packets captured will have a download button that we can click so these two here for the WAN and DMZ interfaces we cannot click in if we try so let's try to download one of the files. I will pick the LAN interface file. So we click on it, download, and we can save it. The file has now been downloaded to my PC. And if I want to, I can open it in a packet capture analyzer, such as Wireshark or T-Shark or TCP dump. We can also download capture files using a SCP. Uh, I will show you how to do that in another video where we go through the command line interface. If we want to continue this capture, we can click start capture. So the counters will just continue. As you can see now, the mode has become active again for all interfaces and the counter is increasing again. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that when we continue the capture now, we will have a gap in the capture. So that's probably not always what we want. Instead of continuing a stopped capture, we might want to start over from scratch. So we click clean up then. Clean up will clear the buffer capture. Uh, at the moment we have these packets in the buffer memory. So if I click clean up, it will just wipe them out and we can no longer download them. They're gone, completely gone. So this was a default capture. 
if you want to do some more fine tuning, we can use the capture options. So let's have a look at them. The first we can use is uh, IP address. And if we enter, an I we can only enter one IP address here and it will match it against the source or destination. It's the same with the port number. Uh, protocol, we can select any, which will match any protocol, which is default, or we can filter on ICMP, TCP or UDP. For interface, we can select all, which is default, or any of the other interfaces. Since I had only four Ethernet interfaces, only those are listed. Capture size is an interesting setting. I told you that the capture is stored in memory, in the buffer. The capture size defines the maximum limit the capture will use. So the default is 512 kilobytes, which is quite small. You can define as much as 512 megabytes. You may want to do this if you have a very busy server, because on the very busy server, if you start a capture, 512 kilobytes will be filled up in a fraction, so it's kind of useless to troubleshoot. And uh, if you increase to, say, 500, 512 megabytes, at least you might have a chance of seeing capturing some traffic. Keep in mind, though, that if you select 512 megabytes, uh, the device must have at least 512 megabytes memory free. But even if you select 512 maximum, it might be that the capture will fill up the memory very quickly. In that case, uh, the web user interface settings that we see here are kind of inadequate. So you can do additional fine-tuning for the capture using the command line interface. Uh, so I recommend you have a look at that if you need to. The clear option setting will reset the settings here. So look at the 512 megabyte. It's now changed to kilobytes. Also, if you want to filter on other protocols, maybe another IP protocol, or if you want to filter on some specific uh, combinations uh, then these settings are of course inadequate so again you have to use the command line interface for that okay so uh, i've now demonstrated how to make a packet capture in the web user interface and uh, i recommend that you have a look at the other video about how to make captures using the command line interface where i will also show how to download the files using the CLI. What I can finally add here is that if you have started the packet capture in the command line interface then and you have stopped it, then you can download the files from the web user interface or vice versa. Okay, thank you for watching.